Hi, everybody. So this Sunday, I spoke on Daniel 7, one of my favourite chapters, a chapter I'm actually named after. Uh, and I gave a bit of context. So Daniel writes this when he's uh, an exile, a stranger in a strange land, having seen his kind of people taken over by the Babylonian Empire. He's been dragged off to Babylon. And he writes this, this dream, this vision. Um, and in it, he describes the, the Babylonian Empire and other empires as these kind of beastly, horrible creatures, which I think was interesting. Because King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, described the same empires in chapter two as these statues, kind of things to be uh, lauded and, and worshipped and symbols of power and might. And it made me think that maybe there are sometimes we see power structures as kind of statues, things to be celebrated, when really those same power structures might push others down and dehumanise and uh, kind of much more monstrous. And often, whether we view it as a statue or a beast depends on which side of history we've been born. And we need to be careful because especially as Christians, our sacred texts are written by not those at the top of the power structure. Uh, but Daniel writes this as a kind of loser of history, someone on the, the underside of the empire, and he sees them as beasts. Daniel has this uh, this uh, heart, this longing for an end to this cycle of kind of violence, this cycle of oppression that he sees in the empires. Often in our lives, we replace one negative habit with another habit, but really uh, nothing really changes. We're just changing the name on the door. And Daniel sees this cycle of empire and says, one day, I'm not just going to be free of my local issues, not just going to be free of the thing that oppresses me, but there's one coming who's going to bring an end for all oppression. And he uses this kind of son of man imagery. And as he does it, I think it's interesting because the son of man is kind of going up, but he's also coming down. This idea that there's someone who goes to heaven, but also drags heaven down to earth. There's one who's on the move with all these wheels and fire, but he's also the court seated. And maybe in our lives, we need a kingdom that's dynamic and moves with us, but also something stable and solid we can build on. We need someone who looks like a human and someone who looks like a God, someone who embraces humanity and divinity. And Jesus comes into that prophecy and says, uh, the foxes have got holes, the birds of the air have got nests, but the son of man, as in myself, Jesus says, I am the son of man. It's got nowhere to lay its head. And maybe we feel a little bit oppressed by by things in our lives. Maybe I talked a little bit about how the fox could be Herod, uh, this kind of shouting voice that puts us down. Maybe some of us feel a bit like we're under the, the eagle of Rome I talked about, by these birds of the air that are kind of uh, powerful. They, they, they are inevitable and they are they're, they're, they're unable to be stopped. And yet Jesus says, even those things have a limit. But me, the son of man, I do not rest. I do not slumber. I'm bringing a kingdom that is going to put an end to this cycle of, of empire and bring a kingdom of love and peace and authority that does not end, that is going to deal with the issues of empires out there, but also going to deal with the issues of our heart. Have fun as you chat about it. I hope you enjoy it. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you're having good discussions about Daniel 7, one of my favourite chapters in the Bible. Enjoy. Bye.